Hey everyone, Justice R. Stone here today with my thoughts on Volume 4 of Fujino Omori's light novel series, Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Now, this volume is told in three parts. The first part is a story that continues from book number three. It takes about two-thirds of the novel. It follows Bell's adventures after he's now ascended to level number two. Now, because he's the fastest to ever achieve this, obviously it's gained him some notoriety. And so it takes a look a bit at how some of the other adventurers now treat him and act when he's around, even how some of the gods and goddesses behave. We're also introduced to a brand new character, Welf Kroso, who is a blacksmith, who I think is going to play a much bigger role going forward. And we get a sort of glimpse into the world of the gods and the goddesses and how they entertain themselves by naming adventurers. This one sort of is taking a bit of a breather. It's kind of regrouping, sort of saying, okay, well, that happened. Now where are we? Now that you're level two, what are the ground rules? There's new skills to be learned. There's new pathways in the dungeon that become available to you because you're strong enough. So it's setting the groundwork for what comes next. Now the second part and the third part are two shorter stories. They're a lot of fun. The first one is set during book three, early on in book three, and sees Belle helping another familia who are friends of Hestia's. And the second is a short story that takes place before volume one, just about three days after Belle and Hestia first meet. And it sort of lays the groundwork for their relationship that we see when we get into book one and why Hestia has these strong feelings for Belle. But it's also kind of cool because it allows you to see some things from Hestia's point of view in terms of her observations of Belle as a person and as a character and how some of the things he says seem to conflict very much with who he actually is as a person and her ideas on those are kind of cool and they sort of I think cement some things that even as a reader I, I've found I mean the story is called Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon Belle talks in the very first one about how it's a man's romantic journey to assemble a harem and the irony of course is that he already has pretty much assembled a harem and yet he's completely oblivious to it and it pretty much means nothing to him. The one thing that I really like about this series is that it takes itself just serious enough to be interesting but at the same time has enough levity to it that it's funny and it gets away with a lot I think because it isn't too serious. Now the one thing that I'm not usually a big fan of is the hero who is stronger than everyone else, better than everyone else, levels up faster than everyone else, and of course that's exactly what we see in Bell. The one thing that I like about it, and the one thing that I think slightly lets them get away with it, is the fact that it is Bell's drive and determination and hard work that is advancing his level. Yes, it seems that he has some kind of innate thing in him that's allowing him to level up that much faster, but it is all about his drive and his determination and how hard he pushes himself to be better and to be stronger. I'm looking forward to seeing if this is discussed in future books in terms of if Bell has something in his origin that we don't quite know yet that would explain sort of what's going on and why he has these particular traits that are aiding him so well in advancing through the dungeon. If those are just ignored and it just is one of those I made the hero super awesome because he's the hero, I, I'll be very disappointed but right now I'm having fun and I'm along for the ride. Again the book is told in a mixture of first person and third person. I doubt that will ever change. First person from Belle's point of view, third person when it deals with anybody else being the point of view character. Bell's voice I really enjoy. I love the fact that he's still quite naive and still very excited about the dungeon. In fact that comes across. You know you you like the kid because that sincerity of who he is and that sincerity of how he feels 
It really comes through and his actions match that. Everything about him is just so sincere and true to who he is as a character. The things he says, the way he approaches things, how he acts, it's all in line. Full disclosure, I suppose I could say I have a bit of a soft spot for this series. And I'm not even really sure why, I just find it to be a lot of fun. I think it's a bit clever how they've incorporated the whole idea of leveling up and skills and very typical RPG gaming type thing and brought it into a world where it exists where gods actually inscribe these things and use these things to bring out latent abilities within a person. It's a clever way of doing the whole person in a video game without them actually being in a video game. So those are my thoughts on Volume 4 of If Is It Wrong To Try To Pick Up Girls In A Dungeon. There are a number of events in this that make it pretty important for you to read, especially going forward in the story, but at the same time, this does really feel like sort of an interlude, a moment to catch our breath, take stock, figure out where we're going, and then probably move forward in book number five. So thanks very much for watching the video. I'm going to be back. Um, I'm going to try and get these videos uploaded every Saturday from now on. I'm going to try and stick to an actual schedule. And so next Saturday I will be back and I will be reviewing volume number three of Log Horizon, speaking of people trapped in a video game world. So I'll be reviewing that next Saturday. I hope you will join me. Until then, bye bye for now.